Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Harmonics. This is a very special edition, something that we are covering that is very controversial of what is going on in our world. We have a guest here, a very special guest, who's been on our show before. She's appeared on national television shows. She's written a book called All Our Might, Gabriela Van Rey. Gabriela, how are you? Thank you for having me again. You know, it's really exciting that you're here. It is. We're covering a different topic now. Absolutely. A y very important topic. Yes, it is a very important topic. And, you know, it's, it's right now. It's happening right now. And that is bullyism. Yeah. Tell me about that and how you got into that. I got into bullying because of my personal story. Mm -hmm. And my personal story for me, as you know from the last time around, mm -hmm. was that I was adopted yes. um, from Pakistan to um, um, a family with no multiculturalism like we have today around them. I was growing up in Holland, Belgium, with a predominantly Western family. Yes. Looking like me, that is odd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've always stood out, and like I told you just before our segment started, I've always found that I was like a person that was kind of looking in, mm -hmm. as if I was allowed to look, but not totally be a part of it. Mm -hmm because I was told I'm Dutch now. You know, you get adopted, so you adopt everything. Uh, the food I prefer not to adopt, but <laughs> and the food is not good in Holland. Yes. But even if you adopt all that, you can understand that it's about acceptance. So yes, a little child wants to belong desperately and be part of a new family, but no, it's not always possible because we gotta be who we have to be. Right. You can't hide. Mm -hmm. So the book was really about, I've been bullied enough, it took a lifetime to forget the words that were shouted at me in school. And I said to myself, there is a message in here, I want us to go from tolerance to real acceptance. And how do we do that? How do we do that? And that's why you're on our show today. You know, how it is such a, it seems like it's a epidemic proportion of mm -hmm. bullyism. It, uh, it's on our internet, it's in our, it's in our t television, it's on, you know, uh, levels of social economic levels of all. How, how do you identify bullyism and how, how did it actually, let's just say, how does that person become a bully or how did he become a bully or she? That's a lot of questions. Yes. Let's start with the first one. Okay. I think uh, it's a slogan that I passionately use. It's a quote of mine. We've dropped the ball on human kindness. We've absolutely dropped it. And by dropping the ball, I really mean that. We have lost what kindness is all about. So we have a choice. What is kindness? Pick up the ball and learn that it's just a choice, mean or kind. But the definition of bullying, and this is really important for everyone, is it is an extreme meanness that is so mean that you are paralyzed. Now, what does that mean? Because you and I have been teased. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you're so paralyzed that you can't function. You can't function in your world. Mm -hmm. work, sorry, and you cannot function in school or in college or anywhere. And this happens, I would say, from six years old all the way till we're literally uh, 60. Because this paralyzing feeling affects our self-esteem. It affects so many things. It's like I said to you, if I'm not very happy at what I look like, and when I was young, I was very short, I'm still short, but apparently You're very beautiful. It doesn't matter being <laughs> short anymore. <laughs> yes. But back then it, it felt like something unsurmountable. And I wore thick uh, glasses. I call them gem pot glasses. So you can imagine anything that we have, that we stand out, that we look Middle Eastern, that we look anything different, or that we're gay, or that we're... Lesbian. Anything. Anything. Anything, anything that we think is not good enough is going to exude from me 
And so a bully, and there comes my second part, comes really into your play here, into the question. What is a bully? A bully, in my opinion, is a mirror image of the victim. And I really mean that, a total mirror image of the victim. So by being a mirror image of the victim, that means that they have everything in common. And nobody believes me. That is really true. Because a bully is also insecure, also has self-esteem problems. And if a bully is insecure and has self-esteem problems, so does the victim. But they recognize it. But the difference between the bully is the bully is much stronger mentally than the victim. So they recognize it in each other. The victim already is so victimized by himself or herself. Because don't forget, many she bullies. Yes. I just say he because it's just so much easier. Right. But it's both sexes, of course. And so if we recognize that, we are going to hound this weaker person. We're really going to hound that person. And we're going to go after him. But how do we do this? That's the key. We only do it in public. We only do it when we have momentum, when we have an audience. Mm -hmm. If you're not there, I have no What's audience. What's going to happen? Nothing yeah. is going to happen. Because you can say something nasty to me, and even if I'm flippant and I say something nasty back, it's just hearsay. Mm -hmm. There's no wheel. It stops. It fiddles away really, right. really quick. But if I have an audience, and I call this audience, and let's take your college as an example, I call this audience bystanders. Because they're just there. They're right. doing nothing at all. They're just really there. Now, but you've heard of Newton's cradle. Yes. This is the bully. The victim starts moving too. Everyone in between is that bystander. But if we take those little balls in the middle and we pull them away, we just walk. We don't have to do anything. We can be scared. We don't have to do anything. Just walk away from the entire situation. Can you imagine? No momentum. No, no power, None. everyone stops. Right. But why don't we do it? That's an interesting question. Why don't we do it? Why doesn't people walk away? Is it because they want to be con confrontational or is the bully just taking control? I think we are so afraid not to be hip, not to be cool, not to be anything. It's really, really strange. I don't get how this works. And I'm telling you, you are cool when you walk away. You are cool to help another human being. Again, to choose kindness, because the moment, even if you don't dare to say anything at the spot, please understand that if you move that one inch closer to the victim, you're gonna help that victim, because that victim felt that you moved into his or her energy space. And so did the bully. The bully saw that, felt it. And there is something in that momentum that stops right there. Every book is an adventure waiting to come to life. Visit new worlds. Encounter new friends. And discover the power of reading. Go to read.gov to read A Princess of Mars, the first novel to feature John Carter. A new world awaits. You know, you talk about bullies. Bullies, to me, seem to be very uh, insecure. Yes. How do you think that actually, how do you, where did that come from? Was it come from their parents, another bully, or where did that, how, did, how did that originate? I think we have two kinds of bullies. Um, I could have turned into a bully, first of all. I really could have, <laughs> right? Because I'm accosted nonstop at school, so I come back, and I could, I never did, but I can understand this really, really well if children do this. You can preemptively start striking. That's one bully. Second bully is the person that is so insecure that before anyone ever hurts this child, it already again decides they're better going to listen to me. But this could be for a sad reason. It could be because of abuse within the home or somewhere else. Or it's learned. Because nobody, no child is ever mean to another one. And here comes a, a question that I have automatically. Mm -hmm. How early does bullying start? Probably, you, at an er, probably an early age, really. I think it starts the moment we learn to interact. 
So you, so it's before, before kindergarten, you think, or think right so. in kindergarten? I, I think, we, well, we learn to interact with our parents, right? Right. Um, I, I cry because I want the bottle, or I want my diapers changed. But that kind of relationship feels very, very, very secure. Now, what doesn't feel secure is the moment I meet a little girl or a little boy. Because here, I suddenly have to start sharing toys. I have to conform. I have to do a lot of things. And I like to use this word, conform. In a school, what if you are from the Midwest? And you come to San Francisco, and you have that cute little accent. And no, no, no. I think it's great, you know, mm -hmm. all these accents. Sure. And you come to Shabbat College, and you have to try to fit in. First of all, you left home because you wanted to Experience. broaden your horizons. Right. And here you get punished. Right. Literally punished. <laughs> and you get from day one, you get told that you're from the Midwest, and they mix it all up. They say Idaho, Iowa, Illinois, whatever. Right. You know, they all... They tease you. Right. Now the teasing is fine until you feel that it's not nice anymore. That you feel like you have to hide that you're from the Midwest and you, ha you do your best not to have the accent. The more you do your best to hide it, the more you do your best to hide the accent, I tell you, it's not going to work mm. because you've decided not to accept yourself. You've decided to conform right there and then there to the group at Shabbat College just to be a popular kid. And I'm telling you, in that process, you do two things. You lose yourself, but you also also lose the respect of everyone else. Because don't forget, every human being, I don't care where they come from, whether they have money or not money, and again, this is an interesting point, mm -hmm. we have something to offer the other human being. All of us learn yes. from each other. Yes. We really do. Yes. So th you're actually saying they'll, they'll definitely lose their identity. Lose totally. I lost my identity totally in Holland. I wasn't sure who I was. And this college kid, same thing. I can see that. It's trying that. to be it from it San is. Francisco. Right. Right. It's like you're in a whole foreign land, but you want to get into that 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 uh, that culture that they have. Yep. You know, um, you talked about early life. Let's 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 just switch the channel. You know, I've heard about how people are bullies on our internet. Oh, uh, cyber bullying. Yes. How, how, t t tell me about that. Tell me what, what's your aspect on that, your, your me viewpoint. Personally, first of all, we have to understand one thing. Technology is a beautiful thing. A lot of parents want a lot of these websites to go away. They won't go away. They, they won't. Facebook will not go away. Google will not go away. YouTube will not go away because otherwise you and I don't <laughs> right, exist I'm going to have anymore. a job right now. <laughs> so this is not going to go away. Technology is useful but it is only useful in how we adults try to teach it to this younger generation. And then again, we're back to choices. Cyberbullying is to me the most coward form of bullying because not only are you striking at another human being, but you're doing it so publicly that every single person on your timeline has another hundred friends, and usually they have a lot more in college, and so that's amplified 500 times. So let's say you have only 100 friends, 500 other friends, that's huge. By yeah. the end of the day, close to 500,000 people have seen that embarrassing photo or the embarrassing video. And this is my question back to college children. Why do we have to record everything? Why do we have to make fun of every humiliating little thing that happens to us? That, that's an excellent point because it seems to be that people have to, you know, where they're at and some of the things that they do post are yes. like, why? I, I'm not interested or, you know, and these are some of your good friends. Uh, so when you say this person is behind, you know, he's, he's on, let's just say, for instance, uh, a bully on Facebook, is, would that person know that person or he doesn't know he or she? Is, or does I think it they know, know them on a really very acquaintance level. Mm -hmm. Let's say someone can sit in college behind me 10 rows mm -hmm. in biology. It doesn't really mean that I know him, but I'll see him or her on a party this happens a lot with girls among each other. Girls are really mean to each other. Mm -hmm. We have this competition that we shouldn't have. Cat fights. But we have that, mm -hmm. yeah. And we have that need for attention, too. And again, this is learned behavior. Mm -hmm. 
And so when we see this in, in cyberbullying, when I see something shared, that's awful. I usually said, it's not nice. Would you want it? That's what I try to do. Very doesn't help point. because the comments that you read are so nasty, are so absolutely nasty about each other. And so I'm back to the bystander. I think you are responsible for the suicide of another human being sure. when you hit that share button. Mm -hmm. You are absolutely responsible. Do not share. I don't want to be there with a glass of wine. Let's, let's just pretend. I hold a glass of wine. You come up to me and say, could you hold this one too for a second? I just need to updo my shoelaces. Mm -hmm. I will do that for you. Someone else takes a picture. There you go. It suddenly says Gabriella Van Rey is a drunk. Right. No, but I mean, and that's, that's how it, it, can, it That's can. how it escalates. And then three pictures later, there are two men next to me. Not and one, she's really two. drunk. She's really drunk. And then it goes on and on, and it escalates. And I think, and I really believe this, and I find it sad, but it's what we show on television. This reality, my, my life is not a reality show. Right. And I would like to keep it private. Yes. But like you just said earlier, I'm not interested in half of the things my friends post. I don't really want to know what you have for dinner every night. <laughs> exactly, or where you're at, or what are you doing, or I'm changing my child's diaper. None of that stuff interests me. I like to see you have things that are concrete that we can exchange a, f a few things, post good things. I always, when I post, and I'm just going to share something with the yes. audience, I always want it to be positive. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little fun, but basically positive because I'm a public figure. I mean, like how you said, we'll post something, harmonics will post something, and we have a lot of friends, and it will just spread. You know. But even if it's not positive, even if you have an opinion mm -hmm. and you say, there's too much war today, mm -hmm. what is your take on it? Mm -hmm. It's maybe negative, That's okay. but you're trying to get a dialogue going. Then technology is fantastic because you do get a dialogue. Yes, you do. You do. I, I asked the other day how to power nap because I'm not good at it. And they came up with all kinds all of things. All the ways to do it. See, that's fun. I love, I love to nap. And I think that's, um, yeah, that, that is a... It creates, for me at least, a, a power nap, actually. I could sleep for about five minutes and then I'm right back. Yeah, oh, you have to teach me after the show. Uh, we'll, sh we'll, 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 we'll talk about that. Lesmove.gov aprenderás pasos simples para prevenir la obesidad infantil y ayudarlos a alcanzar un índice de masa corporal saludable. Visita Let'smove.gov hoy mismo. Let's talk about workplace. Okay. Uh, workers. Yes, workplace bullying. You have, you, let's, let's just go to the workers and then we'll, we'll escalate okay. up. Workers. Say a worker has been there... 10 years, another worker just has been there two years. The, the one that's, uh, well, the, vice versa, it could be, I've seen both cases. I've seen the younger one being a bully and I've seen the senior being a, why is that? Is that, why does that happen in we a workplace? We seem to think that if we give our knowledge to the younger people within our workforce, that we are not important anymore. And I believe it's the opposite. Knowledge is power. Yes. But it isn't a power for us to keep as a hidden secret mm -hmm. in a chest. Mm -hmm. It's to share. Right. And I think, again, this is what I mean with human kindness. Mm -hmm. By sharing it, I don't believe that that person is going to take over your job. I actually believe the opposite. I think there is such a team that can be created through that, that there is synergy and real energy at the workforce, and you could create really good work. So you, you're saying that it, it could enhance knowledge. It enhances totally all enhanced. of us. But if you come, if you already come like, I'm not going to do it, nothing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to be only, only negative. Supervisors yeah. or people that are middle management that are in the, the middle before you, to, to you go to the executive areas. Middle management. Not all managers are good. And there's some of them are bullies. Why is that? Is, it, is that been taught or is it management pushing down on them? I think it's two things. Uh, supervisors don't necessarily learn human behavior. So that's already one. We all behave differently. Mm -hmm. 
And in this multicultural world, we'll behave even more different. Mm -hmm. Meaning, um, I learned something different in my home than you did. Yes. And so my reactions to that would be different. So my big choice here would be to see a supervisor who doesn't go on a power trip and who actually doesn't react on the people that it takes care of, but they just listens open-minded. And the problem is we often don't. We have an action-reaction situation. Mm -hmm. right. And then we say, well, we're your boss, you're gonna do it. And then you create nastiness. Yes. And there's no way out of it. Executives who are up on the power power trip and are big bullies. This is why our, you know, you can just look around <laughs> the world. Smiling why already. is why why is that? And they're supposed to be the people that we kind of look up to for, you know, uh, direction, uh, teamwork. Why is when people are up that high? I think two things. When we get there, we're always amazed and happy and humble that we got there. And when we are at uh, what I call a little bit, you know, a steady motor pace. We're, we're just going along the highway. Mm -hmm. We're happy in our job. Right. We're not humble all of a sudden anymore. And we miss right. the empathy of the other person that works under us that does have three jobs, that cannot stay till 10 after 5 because it's already worried about their children not being picked up from daycare or other worries. We have so many worries today that that's already one of the things and we, we're not kind. Mm -hmm. And I would ask the executive who bullied you as a child mm -hmm. so badly that you have to be so nasty mm -hmm. to someone else. Yeah, it's very hurtful. I, I, I see it a lot in d all different levels. Um, let's talk about personal relationships. People that are fall in love, mm -hmm don't really know the person that well but I mean love is love is a beautiful thing it's probably the most important word in our in so what do you feel about that how 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 can how does that happen is I think love is terrific but I know you read my book mm -hmm. <laughs> I had two marriages didn't mm -hmm. do everything perfect obviously mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would say the best advice I have is don't go into a relationship with, you have to conform to me. I think you're great, I think you're beautiful, but now that I have you, you're gonna change it up a little bit and you're gonna do this, this, this my way, because then I love you. That's crazy. Crazy. But honest, everyone who's listening to me right now knows that this happens. They really, really know. Mm. So please love that human being without expectations. And that is hard to do. That's hard to do. That's hard to do. Um, being married 33 years, I think the best thing I could understand, that I think it is, is to listen. But I think my father gave me the best advice. You'll never understand a woman. Just listen, respect her, and when she needs you, and be there for her. Mm -hmm. and, and you, like the, what was a, a scientist who says, the most complicated thing in the world are women you and in and, and men too, but you know but you guys have such a uh, women are the most important thing in my life you said two things that I two words before we close tonight and that is kindness uh, there's a saying that I've said in, in, in our crew hears me say it a lot kindness costs nothing nothing being humble costs nothing and you get back in triple fold totally so you know, as a guest today, and just um, I'm going to let the audience know, we're going to be having Gabriella to come to our school, and she is actually going to do, um, she's going to speak and talk about bullies, and we're going to have her great. here at Chabot. Uh, it's, it seems so great to have her here because she's so intelligent, and I think she has a beautiful vibe to connect with our students. So what we normally do, and thank you for coming. You're so you, welcome. You know. Um, we're going to do what we always do. Okay. Turn around here. We're going to look at our audience and we're going to tell them we love you and we respect you. And I learned a lot and it's kindness. And we're going to have this lady come to our campus and speak. So what we always do, we give a kiss to all our fans. And you ready? Yes. Here we go.